In this episode of our photography review show, we're gonna review images from 33 photographers. Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of our photography review show in 2022. For those who don't know me, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a professional photographer based in West Sussex, England. Now for the past two or three years, I've been reviewing the photos of my friends and colleagues and it's something that's been very popular. And this is the reason why we decided to offer this to our photography community here at Clever Photographer. Now it's been very, very successful and for the last six months we reviewed hundreds of photos from hundreds of photographers. For the same success, we had to limit the entries to one or two photos per week per photographer. And for the same reason, we always take the show and divide it between two or three parts. Depending on how many entries we get, we usually look at the landscape photographers in the first part and the rest of the photography teams in the rest of the show. Now, before we're gonna jump into the reviewing, I have two things to remind you. The first one is to remember about our new Facebook photography group called Clever Photographer Academy and it's a place where we all meet together throughout the week. Now we review your photos throughout the week, we talk about photography, we answer your photography questions and we also play photography competitions. So it's a lot of fun, we talk all things photography, so make sure you join us there, just head to Facebook, search for Clever Photographer Academy and join us today. Now coming back to the photography review show, each of the episode has a important features you can use to make the experience even better. Now remember about the chapters which you can find at the bottom of your screen, where you can navigate between the different parts and different reviews of the show. So if you submitted us your photos and you're looking for your own review, simply skip to the parts you're looking for by using the chapters. The second important part of the show are the subtitles. You can usually find them on the top or bottom of the video and you can switch them on. That way you can understand more about what I'm talking about. Also, if you're looking for foreigner language, you can switch the subtitles to the language you require. Now, since we're done with all of this, now we are ready to jump into the show and start with the reviewing. And welcome back to the second part of our photography review show, where we're going to be looking at the rest of the photography teams. We have it. 11 photographers to look at, so we're gonna jump straight into it. We're gonna start with macro photographer Dennis. Dennis, we have a two images from you, so let's have a look at it right here. So again, we are in Lightroom CC, we are uh, looking at the pictures in this application, and we have a two images. This is like a cactus kind of capture, with a little bit of noise, to be honest, and um, I'm not 100% sure about the crop, but we'll talk about it in a moment. And then, um, talking about this flower right here, um, it's a lovely idea. I think it creates a really nice contrast between the flower and the background, but there is a little bit of softness in this part of the image, which I think is a little bit of a shame. I think when it comes to macro photography, when you pick your kind of main hero, which is the flower here, you would wish that this whole part of the image would be more in focus and more sharper. Well, uh, let's talk about it. Let's see if we have any details from the camera, and we do. So uh, it's a Fujifilm. We're looking at ISO 500, f4.5, 1, 250th of a second. So, um, Dennis, um, the ISO 500 is what really creates uh, lots of this noise you can see around it. And, and that's what I was kind of mentioning earlier. The problem is that the higher it goes, it creates more of these kind of artifacts. It takes away some of the colors. It damages a little bit of the sharpness. And uh, that's maybe what's happening here. Obviously, the idea is to keep the ISO as close as to 100 as possible. In uh, this case, uh, 500, uh, it just introduced a little bit of additional digital noise. Some of it can be removed on uh, post-processing application like Lightroom and Camera Raw and so much others. So, um, but uh, you just need to keep an eye on it. On the other side, your F4 creates really nice bouquet at the back and kind of blurry background. So that looks quite cool and um, I quite like it. Um, technically, I think it's quite sharp. It's kind of interesting light. It's on the edge of being harsh. And also some parts of the flower seems to be a little bit overexposed. So let's have a look at your light and whites when I hit the option or alt. Um, no, it actually, it seems to be all right. It just seems to be much brighter than the rest of the 
uh, um, picture. I think what's important to remember is that the human eye gets um, automatically attracted by the brightest and whitest part of the image first. So obviously the eyes goes first to this part and then kind of keep going around the image. Um, when we talk about this one, we can look at the technical setting as well. ISO 200 is so obviously much less noise introduced, f5.6 and 1 125th of the second. So when it comes to settings, I think this one is a little bit better. Again, a really nice uh, bouquet and blur at the back. Really love that. Uh, but um, to some degree, you introduce with that little bit of softness to this part of the image, which I think is a little bit of a shame because at this part, it doesn't matter. It kind of works as a leading line and it works out. But then you would kind of hope that this whole thing would be in focus. When I look at the positive side, I think the light is uh, much better here, nice and diffused. The background is uh, soft and blurred, but enough to see still some colors. So I think it really works here what you've done. Uh, and technically, I think this one is actually quite nicely handled. When we talk about composition, I think this one is a bit busy and it's a little bit overwhelming. I think there is a lot happening. There is lots of kind of high frequency of all of these elements. And I think it would have helped if you would have been a little bit further away from the flower. I understand what you're trying to do, being really focused in, but I think the first impression is more abstract rather than describing it as a flower, cactus or plant. Uh, so I think that's a little bit of a shame, Dennis. So that's something to kind of think of next time. Um, also, I think what doesn't help is that the background have a little bit of a similar color as the flower itself, where you can see here um, where you have lots of green and then you put purple against it, it creates really nice contrast. Where here, really the biggest contrast is the light and uh, the white color. The rest of it kind of a little bit uh, blending with the background. So just again, something to think of for the future. Now, when we come to composition on this one, um, I really, really like what I see. Again, a really nice flow towards the flower. The flower being positioned in the upper third of the image works as well. Uh, the kind of V shape created with the flower, also with a little bit of a spider web. I think it really works, Dennis. So composition-wise, this one is really well done, and I really, really like it. Post-processing, post -processing, staying with this image, I think is really cool. Nice, bright, colorful, but still natural. Well done here. Um, really, really, really lovely. Um, the only th thing I would have for this image is just to keep an eye to make sure that the whole thing would be sharp. On this one, again, with the noise, the colors are a little bit away. You can see it specifically on this part of the image. Um, so just something to keep on the future. I'm not going to go on and on about it. So um, what, what you could do is you could try to turn it to black and white. That would be one option. Obviously, you could push a little bit of the saturation just to get a little bit more contrast out of it and maybe a little bit of contrast just to kind of work there. So uh, that's about it, Dennis. Thank you very much for sending us your photos. This one, a little bit extra work to work on. This one is great. So thank you again and make sure you send us more pictures in the future. Now, moving on the next photographer, we have a Lori. Lori, uh, thank you for sending us more photos. Lovely, lovely things. Usually you kind of end up in landscape photographers, but this time I went on mix because of this beautiful butterfly here. So let's have a look at your images. Starting here, um, lovely scene, although a little bit busy and a little bit overwhelming uh, from what I'm seeing. Uh, starting with, uh, I think there is a lot of white. So um, similar to when I kind of capture pictures where there is lots of kind of white track, uh, so like a path. Um, again, it's coming to the point when you say that the brightest and whitest part of the image takes away the attention from the viewer first. So this is where there is a lot of white here, lots of white at the back. And then there is a big, big contrast coming from the kind of harsh light. So obviously lots of shadowy areas which are kind of hidden in the shadows and uh, uh, again, the fact that there is more shadows here makes the composition a little bit unbalanced. So, so just kind of few things we're going to have to look at. Anyway, um, starting with the technical part. So talking about this one, um, ISO 80, uh, F5.6, 1 400th of a second. I wonder Olympus X2. I'm, I can't remember seeing this camera with you before. So I just wonder what was, um, if it's maybe a mobile phone or like a smaller camera. Um, anyway, um, 
Technically, I think the ISO is fine, the f-stop as well, 5.6. Uh, you would kind of go for something a little bit higher probably when the situation is this busy. I would be going more for like a f11, f9. Uh, one four hundredth of a second obviously creates this frozen water. It would be really nice if you would kind of try long exposure here because I think it would create a really nice effect here. But on the other side, when you do this kind of freeze, a frozen effect when the situation freeze, it uh, adds a little bit more of the wilderness. But again, because there is so much bright, it kind of melts a little bit together, so you can't see the wave so much. How to work around it, maybe to position the camera a little bit differently from different angle to try to get and see more of the splashes would help you. Something similar to here where you can see more of it. Here it's kind of very flat. Um, moving on this one, when it comes to the camera, now back to your Canon. ISO 100, spot on, 275 millimeters, so beautiful kind of close up. F6.3, <clears throat> one four hundredth of a second. Beautiful, beautiful capture, lovely details, lovely bouquet at the back, great contrast between the colors and uh, the subject. Everything's sharp here. Absolutely loving this image. Awesome, awesome capture um, with uh, lots of beautiful details. I love butterflies, love butterflies uh, photos. So well done here. A little bit of a shame of the shadows here, um, but it's not a problem, but it's just kind of, you know, you wish that this would be kind of similarly lit, so then the whole thing would just be perfect. But it's still great, great, great capture. Um, moving on the composition. So as I say already, um, during the kind of first impression, a little bit unbalanced with obviously this whole part being in the shadows and dark and this being lit. Because of the sun, I think this all becoming really bright and really contrasty, taking lots of lots of attention away from the overall composition. When I hit the whites here, you can see how some of them are obviously kind of staying white. So there is a touch of overexposure or just about there. So something to kind of keep an eye on. I would maybe lower the highlights just a little bit so I can get a little bit more texture in the water. I think that would help. And also that removes the whites away, as you can see. So something like this would help maybe when it comes to the texture itself. Other than that, it's tilting just a little bit. So maybe look at the geometry and see if the auto would help us just a little bit. So it doesn't. So in that case, I would just sort it just maybe a little bit like this. Um, but that's about it. I mean, as a leading line, I think I think maybe if the light would have been a little bit different, it would work. But in overall, I think you could it would help also if you would have been a little bit higher so we could see the streak a little bit more defined and it would make a little bit more of the leading line here. Now, talking about this one, when it comes to composition, I would probably crop it even a little bit tighter to get the butterfly in the center. So to get more something like this, he's totally on the main subject. So you want him in the center of the attention. And that's what I would do. Also, there are parts. I think there's one here and one here where I think little bit of cloning would help to kind of remove it because I'm not 100% sure what it is. Maybe if you want to tell me in the comments, then I can kind of uh, tell you how to remove it. But obviously, just there's just two of these bits where I would keep an eye on. Other than that, composition-wise, I think it's great. Um, just a beautiful image, you know. Again, as a composition goes, the contrast really works here. The light is really lovely. The texture on the butterfly works. So well done there. Uh, moving on the post-processing, um, again, really nice natural edit. So I think that really works here for you. A little bit more yellow would probably help as well. I would open up the shadow just a little bit more. So I can get a little bit more details in the shadows and uh, I get reduced a little bit of the unbalance here. Obviously, what else you could do on the other side, you could kind of make it a little bit darker here. And that way you kind of getting much more uh, balance composition. Other than that, I would leave this one. On this one, all I could think about is to try to use this tool to remove these kind of artifacts, which I can see one here, one here. That's about it. Um, again, as always, you could add a little bit more vignette to close up on the butterfly. And other than that, it's absolutely stunning. This could be a cover of a magazine, Laurie. Thank you so much for sending us your photos again. Take care. And I hope to see more of your images in the next episode. Moving on, next photographer, Murray. Murray, we have uh, two images from you. One from the Strawberry Farm. Oh, well done. 
Makes me think of summer. I wish it would be summer already. Uh, and then a little bit of still life photographies, two forks, playing around with the composition. Lovely idea. Uh, so let's jump to it. Uh, Murray, um, talking about your camera settings, starting right here again, shooting with Nikon. This was a Tamron 18 to 400. Settings, ISO 200, F20, 1 40th of a second. So I'm assuming a little bit lower light situation here, maybe. Um, again, as always, trying to stick with ISO as close as 100 as possible. Other than that, you know, it really works. Uh, the, the strawberries obviously here being in a focus, the main subject, and then the natural blur with the lovely flow and lovely leading line. It's quite cute. I think it works nice. What I like is that the strawberries are not too dominant, so they, do, they are not taking all the attention away. And in overall, uh, well done here. Technically, I think it's very well done. Maybe in a comment you can tell me why you went for the F20, just so I understand. Is it to keep the sharpness all the way through or because of some other settings? I would love to know. Uh, moving on this one, when it comes to your camera setting, ISO 320, uh, F4.5, one 880 of a second so iso 320 uh obviously probably kind of managing the light situation here um f4.5 i assume that's maybe with that kind of um zoom uh, that's about as uh, low as you can go it works it creates nice bouquet at the back um 180 of a second works as well everything seems to be sharp there is really nice reflection the light isn't the greatest. You can see some kind of highlights on different parts. Um, you can see a little bit of a dirt on the surface and there are kind of few things which you could remove by cloning. But other than that, the subjects are sharp, the reflection is nice and it's a lovely idea, Mary. So I have not much to add to it. When it comes to composition, sticking to this image since we already here, I think it really works. One thing I would check is the geometry and just switch on the auto just to see if it would help with the background. And it actually did. I think um, there is a kind of line here, if you can see it, and I would just kind of keep an eye on it. Other than that, when we look at it, uh, you probably want to have the forks in the center, maybe more something like this, and more like this, and more. And you know what? It's a it's a kind of great practice, surreal uh, subject. I really, really like it. Well done there. Now, when it comes to composition here, I'm really happy. Again, I would keep an eye on my um, geometry. Obviously, didn't do much here, so I, it must be all right. We can, again, try to guide it and see if we need help to it or no, if it's all good. Yeah, it's just something like this, just to make sure that everything is nice and straight. Um, I, I really like the kind of foreground. I really like the leading light. I really like the depth of the field, Marie. Well done here. Post-processing, um, I think there is a bit too much of a green here. So if I would go into your color and just check for the white balance, I think this is more like it. I think a little bit more purple, a little bit uh, more yellow really helps. Obviously, when there is that much of a green, the camera sometimes is keen to kind of push that into the other areas of the image. And this kind of works. This is before and after. I mean, if you look at these parts of the image, you can see how the green is kind of leaking into it. And like this, I think it's a little bit more natural. Um, would I do anything else? Maybe a little bit of vignette just to close the image. Um, Maybe I would do a little bit of local adjustments with some exposure into the, this part, just to kind of, again, highlight the strawberries. And that's about it. Murray, on this one, we good. On this one, post-processing, to be honest, I would turn this to black and white, simply because there is really not much colors anyway, uh, so it would be even more defined. Then I would push the contrast a little bit. I would definitely push the exposure and more contrast. Look at the blacks, if you can maybe push them out to create something special. And in effect, I would maybe push the clarity, you know, to kind of create something like this, really kind of strong, strong composition. Looking at it now, I would probably bring the crop even more so like this. And maybe instead of that, I would actually make sure that the middle is in the center and then you get something like this and it's even more interesting. Murray, great idea. Thank you very much for sending this photo over. Thank you very much for sending both of the photos over. I think this one is great. Well done. And I can't wait to see more of your pictures in the future. Moving on the next photographer, we have a Rashid. 
Rashid, we have uh, two images from you this week. Uh, one is a sky, almost looks like maybe captured from a plane um, with lovely texture on the bottom uh, and kind of gradient and sun on the top. And then we have a little bit more of a park. Rashid, let's talk about it. Uh, so talking about it here, looking at your camera details. Ah, we don't have a camera details on this one. What about this one? Neither. Rashid, and the quality is so, so low. 26 kilobytes. You see, when I zoom in, it looks like an old video game. It's just a really, really pixelated. So let's look at this one. A little bit better quality. So let's just talk about it in overall. Um, Rashid, again, coming back to the same thing, starting with the composition rule, starting with finding a subject, a subject, something very interesting, single tree, uh, building, uh, structure, element, pick that and try to find the best way to photograph it and then build composition around. Look for a leading line, look for a path, look for a frame around it and that way build it up. Again, when I look at this image, it's really difficult for me to say what is the main subject, what is the main thing you trying to tell me. Is it the trees? Is it the path? Is it the grass? Is it the sky? The sky also seems to be a little bit overexposed. So when I go into the light, and I hit the whites, you see everything what's not black is overexposed. Now, when I bring the whites down, it helps a little bit, but then everything here is burned out. That brings me again to the same story I keep saying every week. Human eyes get automatically attracted to the brightest and whitest part of the image. So in your case, this is what the human eye is gonna see when they're gonna look at the picture. So again, I would start with you with the composition, find the subject, Try to capture it the best you can. One single lonely tree, walk around it, find what works the best. Then move onto the actual camera setting. I don't know if you're using mobile phone or DSLR. Um, start with aperture mode. So set up your um, uh, f-stop to somewhere about f7. Let the camera decide everything else. Or go for the full automatic. There's absolutely nothing wrong about it. And then shoot the image. Send it over to me and then we can start from there. On this one, it's a lovely capture. Obviously, every one of us done this in past, flying with the plane, and then they take a picture of this. Again, looking at it, it seems a little bit overexposed. So if I bring the exposure down, if I hit the whites, uh, it looks okay, but then the low quality really doesn't let me to tell you. That doesn't let me tell you uh, where are we with it. Now, um, you have lovely textures on the clouds. Uh, the light is a little bit strong, but it's still very pretty. The composition is quite nice with the lower two thirds being the clouds and the upper thirds being the blue. So it's a little bit nicer. I mean, better idea, but I don't think this will be something what you will photograph all the time, where with this we can work. You just need to go and find uh, a subject and start to think about how to get it at the best possible condition. Anyway, uh, Rashi, thank you very much. I can't wait to see the pictures from you in the future. Uh, again, subject first, camera to auto or aperture mode, shoot it, and then send it over to me. Moving on the next photographer, Zorin. Zorin, two pictures from you, uh, obviously two different images. The interior, I already say, I absolutely love this. I seen it in a group. I think it's a stunning, stunning capture. So let's have a look at it. Uh, beautiful colors, full of details, uh, full of texture all around, really balanced composition. Well done here, Zorin. Love this picture. Now, moving on this one, although it's a very nice image with the lovely sky, uh, with the long exposure, it's kind of tilting again a little bit. I wonder if it's your new um, wide lens. And I believe it is. So uh, let's have a look at it. Starting with this one, we have the details, yes. So again, you're shooting with Nikon Z. Um, again, wide lens, your 10 millimeter lens, ISO 100, so spot on, uh, F8, perfect for this environment, eight second exposure, obviously, um, good job to keep the person uh, sharp, but the rest of the, the image, spot on, and using the S ISO 100 and F8 in interior, that's why you get all of these beautiful colors, beautiful textures, beautiful sharpness, it really works. Um, so well done on this one. Talking about this one, again, um, ISO 100, 13 millimeters, f5.6, 8 second. Uh, so you obviously get the blur with the people, which I think is a little bit shame. I like when they kind of define, but when you're starting to get just a half of the people, I think I'm not crazy about it. I wonder if this is maybe 
outside of this or what's the story if you could write me in the comments under the video i would love to know uh, and obviously this needs a little bit of geometry however the long exposure is really cool the light rail actually works quite nicely here i also like the star effect in the actual lamps i think that looks really cool as well there is something happening here there's like a white i guess that's maybe the car and it's a little bit distracting and also you have a something distracting here on the sky so i think that maybe used to be a tree or something uh and it just kind of stayed there so just something to kind of keep an eye on the future talking about composition this one spot on this uh 10 out of 10 super result absolutely loving this one leading line frame geometry everything is here uh talking about this one composition wise um i think it's a shame that this part of the building is kind of almost cut off that i think it would have been better if you would have stepped back and have the whole area the whole complex in i think the geometry also doesn't help and seems like it's kind of falling on different sides so i'm not sure if the auto will help us much uh maybe a little bit at least like this at least so we get some kind of order in it uh but then obviously by doing that you're losing the sky and everything so just something to keep an eye on but uh still it's pretty i think if there would be more space and to be honest once you cut that bit at least a little bit it's starting to look like it's something would it's like how you want it so i think it's less distracting and it looks a little bit better now obviously you could go into the photoshop and uh then adjust the sky and i think that would really help just to get something like this but still a good effort a lovely sky uh and this building with the warm and everything i think it's quite nice talking about post-processing nothing to add here super cool really love it uh nothing to add this one we already done lots of stuff um obviously keeping an eye on these leftover trees or whatever it is straightening your stuff and again just kind of keeping an eye on the artifacts like this that's why it's always good to kind of shoot one image when there is nothing happening and then shoot image when there is a car going so for example i would have my image like this with the car and then i would have one more image when the car left and then i could just kind of blend in this part of the image in overall Zorin, thank you very much for sending us your photos pleasure as always and i can't wait to see more of your pictures soon looking at another photographer we have a turner turner um not well, okay so what are we looking at so we're looking at the kind of really big panorama with the air balloons and uh, moon and uh, like a big complex scene and then this one which is kind of more kind of artistic work so to be honest uh turner i won't be able to tell you much about this it's not much of a photography I don't know if it's a comp site of if the things being like did there it has this kind of halo around it's very interesting i'm not gonna say no uh obviously it's kind of a little bit of the artistic work um more kind of about photography more in the kind of natural state um so we have a look we're gonna have a look at this picture um okay um turner looking at the picture it's a lovely panorama really really kind of big one i wonder how many pictures was it if you can write it in the comments i would love to know how many images that you put together in order to create this and then um sadly there is no information about the picture but just from what i can see i love the sharpness all the way through i think that's really really cool um the light obviously it's kind of midday light so that's a little bit of a shame because uh, it adds a little bit of the it's not crazy bad because the shadows are quite nice and diffused but then it doesn't bring crazy colors out which would be really nice with it um and this is where i think the first indication goes that the balloons were not really there it you can really easily say by seeing the balloons having this really bright beautiful colors and then you look at the rest of the image which has a, this kind of really diffuse green so uh, the camera and the colors on the balloons would be a similar kind of tones so just something to kind of keep an eye on but technically i mean already uh, heads down for creating such a big panel which actually composition wise really works i think it's really nicely done uh, there is not too much of everything to be capturing such a big scene i think it really works there is lots of different parts of the image which creates a really nice scene so very nice and very well done there turner uh when it comes to the post processing again the balloons you need to work a little bit on your uh 
blending, I think here, I think especially when you kind of go around, you can see how it's kind of been pasted in, which you wouldn't really be able to see that much if you would do a little bit of the color adjustments there. I think that would really help. Now, when it comes to the moon, that looks quite natural, actually. I cannot say anything about it. The moon, nobody could turn around and tell you it wasn't there because I think it's really nicely done. It's nicely done around the clouds. It's kind of in the middle of there and it works. So just kind of different things. Um, I would probably push the saturation just a little bit. Um, let's see if we can do that uh, to create something like this. And you can see right away the balance looks a little bit less um, added and more in their natural kind of state. Anyway, Turner, thank you very much for sending us your photo. Um, if you can, hit me a comment down there. Just tell me how many of the pictures did you put together here because uh, it's super cool panorama. Moving on, the next photographer, we have a John. John, we're going to look at your portrait photos. So we have a two. This one is super cool. I love this kind of dark edit, um, creating this super cool contrast of just the face. Well done there. And then we have this little girl. Obviously, uh, this is a kind of picture I always say would work really cool as a part of a series of the picture, um, where, because this is really kind of close shot and you would like to know a little bit more about the person. So as a part of the series, great. As a part of single image, I think it's a little bit, um, it's crop a lot for me. But anyway, talking about your camera settings. So using Nikon D3300, 3, 3, 3, 3, lens 105, ISO 100, f3.0, 1, 200 of a second. So actually your setting is spot on, to be honest. Uh, going with the three, F3, um, you still have a lots of details in, which is quite nice. Uh, nice sharpness in the eyes. I like that. Quite nice light, to be honest. Um, even with the hair going over the face, I think it still creates quite nice diffusion. So in overall, technically, this one is quite nicely done. Not crazy saturation. So I wonder what kind of color of the light did you use, but still very cute. Um, and when it comes to the actual modeling, it's just very cute. It creates really nice triangle. When it comes to the um, cropping, I wonder why you went for the square. Square never really does great thing for the human face. Um, something like this is already a little bit more powerful for me than the square, but still, um, technically, I think other than that, quite well done. Talking about this one, uh, do we have it yet? Uh, so Nikon D700, ISO 200, f1.4 uh 1 800 of a second cool um again nice sharpness in the eye nice sharpness all the way through with the kind of natural blur and uh depth of field created with with it super super cool again i really really like this one john i think it's it's just very very well done uh talking about composition um yeah it's just i, I can't kind of really say it it's just kind of um, I think a little bit of that the eyes covered not really work for me. I think it's really close up. And again, when it comes to faces and the close ups, I much prefer when it's kind of uh, not square shape. I think the square shapes just create, make the face really look kind of chubby and so on. So just something to kind of think of for the future. But other than that, again, if we would kind of try maybe just to shift the lower third in her eye and do something like this. I think it's already much better. So just for the future talking about this one, that's what I'm talking about, you know, close up to the face, but plenty space around plenty space to breathe. And although this black doesn't necessarily add anything to the composition, it really works. Now, when it comes to post-processing, what about your white balance here? So there was lots of blue earlier. Okay. Um, it, it just seems very yellow for me. So just a little bit of blue, I think would help. I would push the vibrance just a little bit. I like that it's kind of natural edit, which I think really works with the kids, unless you go for some kind of fairy tale feel. I think a little bit of the exposure down would help as well. And then maybe just add some brightness locally. Something like this. Something like this. I think that helps a lot. Uh, other than that, maybe just a little bit of vignette. Let's see, and I think there you have it. So this is what I would do with it. Again, just maybe close the image from the bottom with a little linear gradient. 
something like this and there you have it just to just to kind of have a look how would it look in black and white it would be quite interesting as well to be honest i think you could do something nice as well with black and white but uh, that in the future this one zero to add love it great edit spot on with the darkness shadows uh well well done okay john thank you very much for sending us your photos make sure you send us more in the future by the way if you haven't joined us yet make sure you head to facebook and look for clever photographer academy we talk all things photography there and it's a lot of fun and we would love to have you with us moving on last four photographers for this week we have john torp john i haven't heard from you for a while i feel like i haven't seen some of your images lately so let's have a look what you got for us this week uh feather right here with lovely colors uh lovely golden colors and glow and then we have Something what looks like some kind of glass work or something. So let's have a look at it. Uh, let's like look at the technical part of the image. So again, Canon camera, ISO 100, f16, six second. Hmm. That's a different setting for you usually. Um, but then the light is quite nice. Um, still staying with ISO 100, so no noise added. F16, six second. So being on tripod, the Still quite nicely done, no issues there. Looking at this one, ISO 400, F32, 1.5 second. Hmm, John, if you have a time and you could write me in the comments, why the F-stop F32? Why did you go for F32? Um, obviously that really pushing the shutter speed and, uh, and that's why also the ISO goes up and everything. So it would be just interesting. If you have a time, make sure you write me in the comments why you went for the F32. Talking about composition, it's kind of interesting. Um, there is a little bit of glow around here. So I'm kind of trying to figure out what's happening. If you have done some, um, no, the, you see when I push the shadows open, you can kind of see what you've done here a little bit. And... That's where you can see a little bit of the glow around this part. But other than that, it's a lovely idea. You know what? Nice leading line here. Obviously, the main subject is clear. The black works in the contrast with the color. So, John, I quite like it. Now, on this one, this is much more abstract, and I'm a little bit lost here. I'm, I, I said it so many times, I'm not greatest at abstract pictures, at these kind of really, really close-ups. I always get kind of lost in it. And I feel sometimes you really need to be kind of introduced into what is it you're looking at to understand. Obviously it's a glass, but it doesn't really tell me much. So I can't say much about composition here. Talking about post-processing, I would take care of this glow in a Photoshop. Maybe in overall, I would just shift it a little bit just to get a little bit more kind of balance composition so you get a little bit similar amount of space on each side and other than that i would probably leave it and i can't say much on this one i think there is a lot of yellows on it so just kind of a little bit of cool it down would maybe make a little bit more contrast um and that's about it john i'm sorry i can't tell you much about this one however if you have a moment make sure you write me in the comment about why you went for the f32 Moving on, the next photographer, we have a three wildlife photographers in front of us. So first one is Donna. And Donna, looking at the first picture appearing in front of me, absolutely loving it. Stunning, stunning capture. Lots of details. Beautiful with the water here. Well done there. And then again, we're going back to the bears. Oh my God, Donna, you need to write me where you're from because I feel like I've seen bears from you before. And again, this is so cool with them interacting with each other. Um, I hope you're staying safe when you're capturing these images. Let's have a look at your settings. A Nikon D 850 with your 80 to 400 millimeters lens. ISO 1000, that's on the higher side, to be honest. 175 millimeters, so you had some distance for sure. F8, 1, 2000 of a second. So um, high, high ISO and high shutter speed. I, I always wonder, obviously I haven't been in that situation, but I always wonder if you have to go that fast, if the animals are really moving that fast that the 2000 is necessary. And if you can, uh, make sure you write in a comment uh, what's your kind of strategy on shooting uh, bears and shooting these kind of animals. So that way maybe I even learn for the future. It just seems very, very, very fast. And I think because you're pushing it so fast with F8, that's where you then end up with 1000 ISO. So just something to kind of work on. Um, on this one, you can see a little bit of the noise kind of popping in, obviously. And again, as I mentioned many times to 
other photographers, once you go over a certain threshold on your camera, and it really depends on the gear, you're starting to lose the sharpness and colors. And I think to some degree, that's a little bit it. Like when you look at the fur, you lose a little bit of the sharpness on them. So that's something to kind of keep an eye on for the future. Moving on this one, uh, so ISO 1250, again, very high, uh, but then again, I, I assume similarly, you had to go for really fast shutter speeds, which is 1,600, one to 6,400 of a second, which is super fast, and then F4, oof, to keep it all um, in focus and sharp, well done, uh, Donna, you definitely deserve a medal for this one because you done super well. Beautiful, beautiful image and great capture here. Um, when it comes to composition, loving this one, I would probably do a little bit even closer. I would probably do more something like this. I think you really want to bring attention of the animal. I think that really works. On these two boys, I think it works. I mean, again, you could go closer. Obviously, they are the main subject, so I would maybe do something like this. Other than that, I think it works. Interaction, interaction, interaction. The animals are really important to be captured when they're doing something. 2,000 of the birds st sitting or standing next to the water. That's what I haven't seen in the last six months. And then when I see pictures like yours, when the animals actually interacting, doing something, that what makes the biggest difference. As I said last time, you can capture image with the best settings you had, but if it's boring, it will not help. And then you can capture image like this and people will forget about the setting because it's incredible image. So, Donna, well done. Uh, Post-processing wise, uh, keep an eye on your white balance here. I think a little bit of the yellow is leaking on the animal uh, green. A little bit of the green from the background is leaking on the animal. So that's why the tint is pushed a little bit there. So that's one thing. Here, um, I don't know. I think the white balance is all right. Maybe just a little bit of purple helps to make it a little bit more natural. Look how... Can you see how the color of the river is leaking on their skin? You can see it a little bit like this. So that's just something to kind of keep an eye on. A little bit of the vignette never goes wrong. And that's about it. You could do a little bit of dodge and burn on them, but I would leave them natural because they are beautiful as they are. Donna, thank you again. Take care. And I can't wait to see more of your pictures soon. Moving on the next wildlife photographer, we have a gym. Jim, thank you so much for sending us your photos. We have a monkey and we have a bird. A beautiful, beautiful bird. Uh, from the first impression, really like the monkey, really like the kind of expression on her. As always, with these kind of real close-ups, I always would love to see them as a part of a series. Few images, so then you kind of understand the situation. However, still, lovely capture, lovely blur at the back. Very, very nice. On this one, great color and great contrast with the background. Again, another big mistake when it comes to wildlife photography is to capturing the animals with very similar colors at their back. So then the background and the subject blur together and it becomes quite flat and boring. So in this case, great. Moving on the actual technical part of the image. Let's talk about it. You're using Canon. On this one, your ISO was 3200, f5.6, 100 of a second. So I'm assuming quite low light situation for you to have to go for 3200. As I always say, obviously, you know yourself, um, the goal is around 100 or as low as possible. Uh, otherwise, you start to introduce a kind of lots of digital noise. Um, I don't know, uh, maybe it's because of noise screen, but on the background, it's a little bit visible. But I think with the black and white, it's kind of manageable. So good on you there. Um, the animal is sharp, sharp all the way to the eye. The blur at the back works. So well done. When it comes to the uh, capture here, on um, ISO 1600, F9, 1, 2500 of a second. That's the shutter speed. So well done here. Again, the eyes are a little bit on the higher side. And again, you can see it quite a lot on the background itself. But other than that, the animal is beautifully sharp all the way through, including the flower. So I think it really works very, very well. Lovely blur at the back. Uh, and in overall, technically, I think both of the images are actually quite well done. Just keep an eye on the ISO. Moving on to composition, quite nicely done, to be honest. Uh, this portrait actually really, really works. Um, no, I, I don't have much to add to this one, actually. I think it works. I think it's nice. There is enough space on the side for the animal to breathe. And uh, well done, well done. On this one, I wish there was a little bit more space on this side. In overall, it's, it's a great picture. 
Jim, don't take me wrong, but I think if it would be a little bit more space, I think it would help. Um, or at least on this side of the animal, it seems for me a touch too close. Other than that, it works. The animal sitting on the uh, grass, I think uh, the contrast between the color of the bird and the background really works here. So in overall, well done. Post-processing, nothing to add here. Lovely black and white uh, with a little bit of a color in the mouth. Uh, a little bit of a green in the background, so it really works. On this one, I think it's a little bit, little bit too saturated, so I would just bring the saturation a little bit down. Keep an eye on your white balance. Um, so I think let's have a look before and after. It just removes some of the yellow from some of the blue from the back, so I think that helps a little bit. A little bit of the saturation down, and then bring the vibrance up. I think maybe something like this. And that's about it. So it looks great. Uh, maybe a little bit of more vignetting just to close it up. And that's it. Jim, thank you very much for sending us your photos. It was lovely. Especially the bird is a great capture. Well done on you. And uh, um, send us more pictures in the future. And finally, the last photographer, Ken. Ken, we have a two images from you. Again, talking about wildlife photography. So obviously we have a two eagles, dare I say, uh, or two birds sitting on their nest. And then we have a bird walking in the river with lovely reflection here. So let's have a look at your camera details. Uh, first one, so you're using Nikon Coolpix. Mm, I never heard about Nikon Coolpix before. ISO 200, uh, 862 millimeters. Wow, that's a big zoom. With F8, 1 500th of a second. So, uh, Ken, first of all, great capture. Uh, obviously, everything is sharp, uh, lots of details, um, not much of a texture in the sky, but that's fine. At least it creates a nice contrast with the animals. In overall, lovely here. I think technically not much I can add, especially when you're on 800 millimeters. On this one, we, we are still with the same camera, ISO 125, so nice, nice uh, ISO. F5.6, 500 of a second. So again, um, it looks sharp to me. All the way through. Um, shame there is not a little bit. No, shame there is no more blur at the back because I have to say the background is a little bit boring compared to the animal itself. What helps here is that the background is completely different color than the animal, so it still creates quite nice contrast here. When it comes to composition, let's stay with this image. I think a little bit of different cropping would help. I think I would get reduce of the green again if it doesn't add anything to the overall. Uh, um, image, it doesn't need to be there. So I think if you would have gone for something like this, it would be so much better. And uh, with the reflection and everything, I think it works. What you could also do is you could go for something like this to give the bird a little bit more of space. It really depends on what you would like to do. But I think that way it creates much more impact. When it comes to this, now because the birds are facing this way, I just wish your camera went a little bit more there. I wish there would be more space here. So it's kind of the other way around. So oh, I, I know that the birds are kind of sitting this way, so it would kind of make sense to keep the space here. But I think if there would be space on the other side, it would make uh, more sense and it would work a little bit better. Still, Ken, thank you very much for sending us your photo. Um, it's lovely. So, uh, but before we go to go, I forget we need to look at the post-processing. So on this one, not the most interesting light ever. Uh, let's have a look at the white balance. Let's just quickly shoot it to... That doesn't help us much. Um, I wonder how we would look with the black and white. Not much neither. So just kind of a little bit more saturation and uh, maybe a little bit more contrast would help on this one. Now talking about this one, definitely bring down the exposure a little, bring up the contrast. I would open the shadows a little bit more and see for the whites. Maybe more of the exposure, so something like this. And again, I would definitely check out the white balance just to see. Not that much blue, but something like this. And there you have it. So on effects, I would add a little bit of the vignette to add more focus on the birds itself. And then I would leave it. Again, thank you so much for sending us your images. It was a pleasure to see them. If you have more, make sure you send them over. I would love to see them again. And that goes for all of you folks. If you want to join us for the next episode of our photography review show, make sure you head to our website cleverphotographer.com review. 
and that's where you can find all the upcoming dates that's where you can find all the links for the upcoming episodes and you can join us already for the next week on monday guys thank you very much take care and until next time keep shooting